Hi Guide Dogs of the Desert Facebook friends and family members. We had a little technical glitch in the beginning. This is actually the Guide Dogs of the Desert's first attempt at being on Facebook Live. So you'll have to bear with us if there are any technical difficulties. If you didn't hear me before mention the fact that uh, we are in Whitewater, California. Uh, my name is Jennifer Hagee. I am the Director of Development here at Guide Dogs of the Desert. And for those of you who are not familiar with our nonprofit, we give fully trained guide dogs at no cost to visually impaired individuals. And you're gonna hear a lot more about that process as we go through our puppy shower over the next 20 to 30 minutes. So uh, <laughs> what you're hearing in the background is the star of the show. Her name is Alexa, and she is a very, very pregnant lab. Alexa, look, I have treats. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that we are keeping those CDC guidelines at the top of our minds here at Guide Dogs of the Desert. That's why we have our masks on. All of us are wearing masks all day, every day. We are considered an essential business by the County of Riverside because we train dogs. We have dogs that we work with on a daily basis. And as you guys know, sheltering at home in place, it gets kind of boring. But our dogs think this is the best thing ever because they get to be with you all day, every day. The dogs here on campus think it's the best thing ever as well. So uh, we are still training and working with all of our dogs here on campus. Um, Alexa is very, very pregnant. You might have seen her maternity photos online. But we also have Patty, who is a poodle in our program, who is so pregnant that she's probably going to pop at any moment. So you're not going to get to meet Patty this afternoon, but we will guess how many uh, babies are in Patty's belly. We'll also um, do some games with Alexa. And uh, we can jump into one of those games right now since baby showers are all about games and prizes. What we have here is a cylinder full of toys courtesy of Soda Pup. So Soda Pup is a company that has started a new relationship with Guide Dogs of the Desert, and they are offering a discount to all of our friends. All you have to do is go to their website. Their toys are kind of like those indestructible toys that are really good for heavy chores. If any of you have a lab in your home, you know that they can tear apart anything, and uh, these are approved by our training department. So Soda Pup's website is sodapup.com, and uh, we have a special code for all of you to use to get 10% off. It's GDD2020. And you use that code, you get 10% off of your purchase, but Guide Dogs of the Desert will also get 10% back as a donation to our organization. So go ahead and count however many toys you think are in this cylinder. Oh my gosh, I almost dropped it. <laughs> it's quite heavy. There's more in there than you think. That's a little hint. And then we'll also count how many Nyla bones are in the next cylinder. So we have lots of opportunities for you guys to win great prizes, courtesy of Guide Dogs of the Desert. These are also approved. The company Nyla Bone is one that lots of folks are familiar with. And you can go ahead and in the comments section below, type in the number of toys that you think are in this cylinder. And then we will circle back around with you guys next week and mail you your prizes. So um, go ahead and do that right now. And I'm gonna pause for any questions that anybody might have about what we do here, about our facility, about our guide dogs. Does anybody have any questions so far? Right now, people are asking how long is the dog pregnant for? Oh boy, I'm gonna leave that to uh, Angel, who you're gonna meet in a little bit. We're gonna have the opportunity to hear from our breeding department, and we're gonna have the opportunity to hear from our training department. So um, Angel's gonna be the one that's gonna touch on that, and then you'll get to spend a little bit more time with Alexa as well, who is basically cruising for treats. That's what she's doing. We've got <laughs> treats strategically placed around the room. We, so. we have a question, where are you filming from? Oh, okay, so. We are actually uh, in our dormitory right now, and um, Michael Anna, our training supervisor, is going to talk about the fact that we have dorms on campus and that we have folks that come from all over the nation come to us and live with us for 28 days straight and train with their guide dogs. So I'll leave it to them because they're really the experts. I'm the person that wants your money. 
<laughs> so if you would like to make a donation to Guide Dogs of the Desert, we are a nonprofit, and that's how we maintain our status is through donations through folks like yourselves who um, can go ahead and get involved in this puppy shower because not only do we need actual dollars to keep the facility and to keep our operations going, but we need stuff for our puppies. And um, that's in the form of, you know, little chew toys, blankets, um, all kinds of things to make sure the puppies are happy and healthy, baby collars, everything is gonna be listed on our Amazon wish list. So if you wanna make a donation to us in the form of an item, just go to Amazon and then you'll see our wish list. Everything's listed below for you. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn it over to the head of our puppy making department, which is the important part that we all wanna know about. And Angel is going to take it from here. Hi, all you cool cats and kittens. It's Angel from the puppy making department. And I'm gonna to talk to you about two different things. First, I'm gonna to talk to you about our breeding department. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about puppy raising. So as you can see, Alexa is very pregnant. She's gonna be a wonderful mom, but there's a lot that goes into becoming a breeding dog for guide dogs of the desert. It starts as a puppy. We do most of our breeding in-house. As the dog gets becomes a year old, we start medical testing for orthopedics, for eyes, cardiac health, and extensive genetic testing to make sure that these dogs do not have any genetic diseases that can be passed on to these puppies. Once they clear all that, then we work with our training department to do temperament evaluations on these dogs to make sure they have the right temperament to pass on for a good working dog. Once we breed these dogs here at the, our facility, they go home to their breeder hosts. Our breeder hosts are wonderful volunteers that love these dogs, get them through pregnancy. They make sure that they're meeting all of their milestones as given to them by Guide Dogs of the Desert for the pregnancy. As we get to the latter stages of, our, of the dog's pregnancy, we do ask that they come back to Guide Dogs of the Desert, where our trained medical team picks up caring for them 24 hours a day. So as we get close to the time of birth, as we're tracking it, our medical team stays with them all day, all night. We make sure there's no complications, nothing that needs to be addressed. Um, and then we also pamper these dogs. So they get spoiled, they get lots of cuddle time. Alexa's off doing something. Um, but the, our primary focus is, of course, these moms and, and bringing these puppies into the world healthy, happy. So with puppies comes our puppy raiser aspect. So we have an extensive group of volunteer puppy raisers that just work magic with these puppies. They work really closely with guide dogs of the desert um, for training, upbringing, medical, all the puppies need so that we can guide these puppies to be the best possible guide dog they can be. Um, we're always looking for puppy raisers. So if you're interested, first I wanna say that there's no experience required to become a puppy raiser. You're gonna to wanna to go to gdbca.org and put in an application or just give us a call at 760-329-6257 and inquire about puppy raising. From there, our staff's gonna give you a call and we're gonna start going through the application process with you. Um, upon receiving a puppy, you're gonna receive hands-on guidance from our training department, our medical department, um, for everything that the puppy's going to need from vaccines to what tr where they should be training wise on a week to week basis. Um, our obedience classes are here on campus. Everything you could possibly need will be um, given by guide dogs of the desert. Um, outside of that, we have another game and that's gonna be Patty. So, we are going to ask you guys to guess how many puppies 
Patty is going to have. And there's a photo of Patty. It's also on our Facebook page if you want to take a quick another look at that close up. And I'm going to turn it. We have a question. People are asking how many labs versus poodles do we have in our program? We have about a 50-50 split of Labradors and Poodles currently in our program. Um, of course, when it comes to breeding, that is all nature um, and the heat cycles are different. Um, but when it comes to guide dogs, it's about a 50-50 labs versus Poodles. Okay. Also, could you give us the uh, donation um, link again, please? Where, where they donate. For the Facebook page or? Yes, they're asking where do they donate? Okay, they can go to gddca.org and click on the donate button. Absolutely, go to gddca.org and click on the donate button to donate to Guide Dogs of the Desert. Awesome. Are there any other questions? I had lots of guesses on how many puppies uh, Daddy's gonna have. Yay. Um, also, Noah wants to know, um, where's Noah's question? Noah had a question specifically for Angel. <laughs> Why are the Cubs better than the White Sox? <laughs> <laughs> Still not going to budge. White Sox win, Noah. And I'm going to turn it back over to Jennifer. Okay, so I'm back for another game. And this one's going to be kind of fun if I can get her attention. So Alexa, come. Alexa, come here. Good girl. Good girl. So right now, we are going to measure Alexa's belly. And let me tell you, it is big. She is much bigger than Patty, who's due any day. And Alexa's obviously not had her babies yet. I'll go ahead and me measure the circumference of her belly, if she'll let me do that. Labs are so sweet, they wag their tails 24 hours a day. Here, baby girl. Okay, so I know how big around she is. Hopefully you didn't catch that on camera and cheat at all, but you can go ahead and type your guess below. And uh, we don't know how many babies are in that belly right now, but as soon as we find out how many lab puppies we have on campus and how many poodle puppies we have on campus, we're obviously gonna share that information with you. And like I said, we will mail you your prize. You don't have to come to Guide Dogs of the Desert to pick it up. We are closed to the public right now. But as soon as we do reopen, we'll be doing tours again. You can come see the facility and learn more about what we do here at Guide Dogs of the Desert. So it is my pleasure to give you some tips and tricks from our training supervisor, Michael Anna Padilla, about how you can work with your dog while you're sheltering at home in place and give them that opportunity to learn more and be better dogs. And she's gonna teach you a few uh, tricks in a series of online videos that we're gonna be doing over the next couple months on how to make your dog just a better dog in general. So I'll turn it over to her. Hi everyone. See, I know how to get your attention, huh? How's everyone doing? All right, so my name is Michael Anna. I'm the training supervisor here at Guide Dogs of the Desert. And I want to go over a couple things that you can do with your pup while you guys are stuck at home. Although you're kind of stuck, your dog is very excited to have you around and wants to do lots of fun things with you. And so this is a great opportunity to start um, either training them to be a better pet or even uh, a super pet. So one of the easy things that I like to teach my dog, and this uh, is the, the game touch. And this is something that you can use for a variety of things. You can use it for your recall, but even more exciting, you can teach it uh, to your dog and then you can transfer it to having your dog actually close cupboard doors um, or even drawers or something like that. So we're gonna do a series on how to teach your dog touch. So. Step one is you can actually do this all with food from their, uh, their meal. You can do this before dinner. And what you're gonna do is in your palm of your hand, you're gonna take a kibble or a small treat, whatever you want, put it in your hand and say you make a fist. 
You're going to put it down kind of close to your dog's nose. And when they touch your hand, you're actually going to say the word touch. So do this. Touch. Good girl. Nice job. Make sure you add some praise and some love too. Dogs don't just want treats. They want you to tell them how wonderful they are. So we're going to do that in a couple different places. And you can actually practice moving them around. Touch. Good girl. Very nice. Very nice. Touch. Good girl. Notice I'm saying touch right when her nose hits my hand. Touch. Good girl. Very nice. Good job. And that's it. It's just going to be a couple of fun uh, exercises with them. And you want to take it short. You want to do really short sessions. You want to keep their attention. You want them to think that training is fun. All they need is a couple of short sessions and then you move on uh, to do something else. You release them with an okay and then you come back to it an hour or two later and try it again. All right, so you're going to keep working on that. Teach your dog that uh, they want to go and they want to touch that hand and then we'll show you next week their next step after that. Now I think Amy mentioned there's a question about where we're at and where we're at right now is actually our dorms. This is our dorm facility here at Guide Dogs of the Desert. Um, it hosts up to six students. And what happens is when we train the dogs, we need to match them with their blind clients. And these dogs are, know how to do guide work, but the clients need to learn how to work with them and they need to do a bond. So what we do is we bring all of our people here. They stay in our facility for 28 days and they're matched with their new partner and they learn to work with their new partner and they spend 28 days um, living with their dog and learning from our instructors on how to uh, walk with their dog, how to take care of their dog, and how to, more importantly, bond with their dog so they become a great working team. At the end of that 28 days, we have this amazing celebration, which is graduation, where everyone celebrates all the hard work that we've done. And then uh, that is when puppy raisers, whom Angel mentioned, get to come and see their dogs all grown up in a guide dog harness and meet their new handler, meet their blind handler. Um, and actually a lot of our puppy raisers end up forming amazing bonds with the person who receives the dog that they've trained. So that's a really fun experience. Yes, Amy, is there another question? Well, Snoop is recognizing your voice because he's watching with his uh, guide team member, Lori, and says hi. But a lot of people are asking me, um, how do the puppies get their names and how old are the puppies once they go to the puppy raiser? Oh, that's a great question. So the puppies get their names. You mind if I take this one? Sure. All right, I'm right here. The puppies get their names from actually being sponsored. So all of our dogs are sponsored. Um, you'll notice here we have sponsor a puppy and people name dogs after um, something that's important to them usually. Um, it's a donation and it helps take the puppy um, all the way from when they're a puppy all the way into formal training. It helps cover that cost. And for uh, giving us that donation, you get to choose the name of a puppy. Um, we have people who uh, donate and sponsor dogs um, in honor of their pet dogs, in honor of their family's pet dogs, um, in honor of their family members, um, or something that just means a lot to them. So there's a whole bunch of different names, but they're all amazing names. And I love the fact that they actually have real um, meaning behind each of them. And what was the other question? There's another question. How old are the puppies? Oh, how old, that's right. Um, the puppies go to the puppy raisers when they're about eight weeks old. Um, between they're eight and nine weeks old, they go to their puppy raisers. And the puppy raiser has them for about a year and a half. It's gonna depend on when uh, we call them in for training, but it's about a year and a half. So you get them through uh, the cute puppy stage, the annoying teenage stage, and right when they are uh, grown up and mature enough, you get to send them to us for us to teach them how to be real guide dogs. All right. Okay. Should we go let Jennifer come back? Okay. We're going to go ahead and get Jennifer back here and say goodbye. <laughs> Notice how Alexa follows the trainer wherever she goes because she still has those treats in her pocket. I'm jealous of my coworkers because their masks fit so perfectly and mine keeps falling down. 
But uh, I know there's a lot of questions and we will circle back around with all those questions on Facebook or even through just regular email and make sure that everybody that has submitted a question this afternoon gets that question answered. I also wanted to touch on the fact that um, sponsoring a puppy does have a cost associated with it. So um, it's $5,000. And the reason it's that price point is you get to follow that dog's journey all throughout the process. But what we do is we send you correspondence on how that dog is doing. So you get all these updates and information about that dog that you have sponsored so that you can follow along on its guide dog journey. And a lot of people will ask us what happens if their sponsored dog doesn't make it into the form of guide dog work. Usually what we do is first and foremost, we will try to keep that dog in a career where it's a working dog, such as partnering with the police department, partnering with search and rescue, um, working with a child that has diabetes, those sort of things, because these dogs really do want to work. They have that drive. Um, so if they don't make it into a, a career change, they can ultimately um, become pets, and we do have a long waiting list for that, but that is very, very, very rare. So um, that's one of the most common questions we get here at Guide Dogs of the Desert. So I wasn't sure if we had that question yet, but I thought it would be a good idea to touch on it. So if you are looking to help us, please sponsor a dog. Any, any donation makes a difference right now. You know, nonprofits are still trying to do what they do and we are trying to train these dogs and provide them to our visually impaired individuals. Once again, at no cost to them. Cost about $80,000 to train a guide dog from start to finish. So that is a tremendous expense for each individual dog. So um, we do need donations as little as a dollar or as large as sponsoring a puppy for $5,000. So we would appreciate anything that you guys can share with us. It looks like my coworkers are trying to get a question answered. Do you guys have another question for us? Okay, <laughs> we'll circle back around to that. But I just wanna say thank you so much um, we would love to ask you to support us by liking us on Facebook, telling your friends and family about following Guide Dogs of the Desert. We are really changing our social media presence and trying to come to you guys live, and you'll see a tremendous amount of Facebook posts on the organization. And we love it when you comment with your dog's photo or you comment with your dog's video because we like to see what's happening at your houses too. A lot of you have guide dogs of the desert dogs, but a lot of you just have rescue dogs or your own dogs, and we want to see all those dogs. So uh, follow us on Facebook, or I guess you want to follow us on Instagram. Uh, we have our new Twitter account set up. We have our LinkedIn account set up. All of those forms of social media are really important to grow our presence and our marketing here at Guide Dogs of the Desert. So um, sponsor a pup, check out our Amazon wish list. Um, send me a new face mask that fits me properly. <laughs> Any of those things would be really great. But thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being a supporter, just for being a viewer, for being a member of our Guide Dogs of the Desert family. We truly could not do it without you. So uh, we will be in touch. Yes? <laughs> Amazon Smile. Oh, and Amazon Smile, of course. So for those of you who are going through Amazon, to make a purchase off of our wish list, make sure you type in www.amazonsmile.com, select Guide Dogs of the Desert as your favorite charity, and we will get a percentage of your Amazon purchase. Right, Alexa? That would make us so happy because that's the easiest way to support us without having to do anything on your part. You're just uh, selecting Amazon Smile instead of amazon.com. You can even type it into your Google search bar, Amazon Smile, and then just make sure you select our charity. But uh, we'll get a percentage of the proceeds just like we do from your Soda Pup purchase as well. Once again, that website is sodapuppup.com. So I just wanna say thank you. Bye everybody, and uh, we'll be doing this periodically. Check back for those training tips courtesy of Michael Anna and our training department here at Guide Dogs of the Desert. Take care everybody.